afternoon from the kitchen, folks. Something terrible's happened. I've run out of beer. No! So I thought I'd better get a brew on so I've got something to drink this summer in the garden. So it's currently April 2024 and this is an absolutely terrible time to start a lager. This is something I should be doing in autumn so it lagers over winter and it's ready for the next spring summer. Um, I'm way late doing this but I'd not realised that I was so low on beer. So I'm now doing a lager and I've picked a lager especially because I have one kit which is due to go out of date this summer so it needs to be used. So that's pretty much the preamble. The lager I'm going to do is going to be a citrus lager. Let's have a look at those key ingredients. Okay, so I'm using a Young's Harvest Pilsner beer kit. I've never used this kit before ever, but everything else I've used from Young's has been pretty spot on. Alongside that, I've got some Young's yeast nutrient, which will feed the yeast, which is lurking under the top of that uh, seal there on the top of it. I'm going to add some of my own hops. These are Cascade hops grown in my own garden. They've been dehydrated and packed. I've just recently used some in another brew, but apart from that, they've not been exposed to air, so they should be fine. I'm going to add some light spray malt, 500 grams uh, from Muntins, and I'm going to supplement that with one kilo of dextrose monohydrate brewing sugar. And my citrusy flavours are going to come from some Wovich uh, Citrina flavour, which is lemon flavour syrup, alongside a bit of a weird one. Crusher, remember Crusher, the milkshake stuff? Crusher Lime Milkshake Mix. Yes, Lime Milkshake Mix. I can't think of anything more awful than a lime milkshake, but when I look at the ingredients on this, apart from the usual uh, preservatives, there's nothing in here which should really spoil this brew. So I'm going to add two bottles of the Crusher Lime Milkshake Mix into this. And finally, I don't know if it's necessary, but I'm going to put a bit of pectilase in, in case there are any pectic enzymes, particularly from that or from those. I don't think there will be, but it will help to clear it if there are. I'm also going to be using spring water. I've got 20 litres there. I may or may not use that much. So let's crack on. So I'll begin with my hops and I'm just going to literally shake and then drag some out into this pan and I want to make a hoppy tea. This could be a two day brewing process and I might end up leaving the hops overnight to steep. I think that will do it. Well, the hops will add a nice level of flavour which will complement the uh, citrusy flavour and obviously it's going to give it that nice bittering quality too. So that's what I've got in the pan. And I'm going to add to that pan five litres of spring water. Now the reason I use spring water is the tap water in Leeds where I live is quite chlorine and it has tainted brews in the past. So I just use this for safety's sake. It's so inexpensive. This big five litre bottle was literally less than £1.50. So it's not worth risking it to me. That's all in. So I'm going to move this onto a medium sized ring. I'm going to put it on low and I'm just going to leave that now to make a tea, a hoppy tea. So that was my big pan, but this is my big, big pan. And into my big, big pan goes another five litres of water. Let's put another five litres of water in there. Let's make it ten. So I'm going to put some gas on underneath that. It's a bigger ring, but I've got it on low and I've ignited that. And I'm going to put my one litre of brewing sugar now into that pan of water. And this is just really to get this out of the way, which is why I'm doing it now rather than later. It's a big bag, it's in the way a bit. So that's my kilo of brewing sugar that's gone in there in case I said litre. And there it is, and that will dissolve fairly rapidly with the heat. And actually joining that, I'm going to put my spray malt in as well. Might as well get them out of the way. So I'm just going to tip that in. It's got that lovely Horlicksy. Oval teeny smell. Mm. 
I'm sure it tastes revolting, but it smells nice. And then with my big spoon, I'm just going to give it a stir around so nothing's sticking to the bottom, which it isn't. Right, it's time to get into my Young's Pilsner kit. So Harvest Pilsner Lager kit. It says it takes approximately five to ten days. That's what I would kind of expect, to be fair. You can peel the instructions off, but first of all, I'll take the lid off the top. That's the yeast. It doesn't say what sort of yeast it is. Don't really care. I always use what comes with it. Some people don't, but I tend to do, and I've never had a bad one yet, so happy enough. So the kit itself is, you meant to take the label off to expose the instructions, which I don't really need to do. But in fact, it's one of those labels which just doesn't want to come off at all. And in fact, the instructions are already ripped. So I think I'm pretty much wasting my time trying. Yeah, this ain't gonna come off. Sod it. Let's just get it off because I don't want to leave them anyway. But I do want to keep the tin afterwards because I will reuse this tin something else. There we go, just chuck that over there. Right, so I need to get into this. This is always the struggle. No, just pop straight off. Doesn't matter which one I use, I always, always have this problem. Right, let's try again. Nice and gently, nice and gently. Okay, it seems to be going reasonable now. Okay, I'm doing okay. Oh, then we come on stop. Right. So now if I go like this, it should bring the lid, and it does. And now you can see what's inside there. Yummy. So this is some proper sticky, gunky stuff. I've just tried dipping it to get the uh, sticky off it, but the water isn't anywhere warm enough. So that was a silly thing to do, really. Never mind, let's gravity do its thing. I'll come back to you shortly. Right, so I've just bent the lid and got it on there, but you can see for yourself, this is such a sticky, gloopy mess that it's going to take ages for it to come off. So I've got to get this tin emptied as well, which is going to be interesting. So I'm going to begin with a classic pour, and then I'm going to resort to some boiling water. Look at that, how ribbony it is. And the level inside the pan rises. It's quite artistic actually. Like extreme treacle. This is going to take a while. I'll come back to you. Okay, that's as much out as I'm going to get, so I'm just now boiling a kettle of water to dissolve what's left in there. Right, so I've got my tin here with all the malty stuff stuck around it, or the malt extract I should say. And I'm going to pour the boiling water almost to the top. So you can see how far I've filled it, and I'm simply going to put this on top. That'll trap the steam in there, and that will cause everything that's stuck around the sides above to melt into the water. So I'm literally just playing the waiting game for a minute. I'll come back to you shortly. Right, I'm now going to get the melted malt extract into the big pan. Get the lid off. I'm using oven gloves because this is going to be very hot, obviously being boiling water in metal. And one quick tip. Sorry for the background noise, the dishwasher has decided to empty at the wrong time. Right, that'll do. So that's the current state of play in there, which is pretty good. And here, this is now getting quite full. I'm not going to add anything else into this now. I'm just going to give it a bit of a, a move around. There's nothing stuck to the bottom. It feels very buoyant, so I'm happy enough with that. With regards to my hoppy tea, it's not yet come to a simmer, so I'm just leaving that. And once again, I'm playing the waiting game. Incidentally, if you're wondering why I've kept the tin that the malt was in, I'll show you what I used them for. They make great bottle drainers. So when you've washed your bottles out and you want to get all the liquid out of them, 
and just turn them upside down in those. Right, we've got some progress. You can see that the hops are now simmering away. I'm actually going to turn the heat completely off these now and just leave them. Over here, it's not boiling, but everything's dissolved and it's getting to a steaming point. So I'm actually going to turn the heat off that one as well. So what I want to do is I want to leave these now until tomorrow. I'm going to let them cool down. I want to turn the brew into a two day process. I'm letting them cool. Basically because it will allow the hop tea to develop in flavour and it will cool the liquid down because my fermentation vessel is made of plastic. Right, I'll catch you tomorrow for the conclusion in getting all this put together. See you then. Hey folks, it's preparation day two for my citrus lager and this is also going to be brew day one and it's time to put all this together. So let's have a look at everything. So this has been... Um, on the ring since yesterday it's been overnight it's now just literally slightly warmer than my hand it's not at a dangerous temperature for the plastic brew bucket so that's fine this one over here similar sort of story just warm but by no means hot i've got my crusher lime uh, cordial over here and i've got my vovich uh, citrina as well and my other ingredients and i've got some water as well so I'm going to begin by straining my hops into the bucket. So I've got my colander sieve just here. I've got my hops in the pan just here. Plastic jug and it's just a case of pouring the hops through the colander sieve so that the liquid goes through and that I capture the hops. I don't want them to go through as well. I don't want to over hop it and it might make it taste a bit funky if I leave them in there too long and they start to decay. So I'll just use the back of the big spoon to press them a little bit to get a bit more liquid out. I'm not desperate for getting all the liquid out, it's fine. I've got a feeling I may end up with too much liquid for the bucket. I don't want a bucket eruption, but it could happen. Right, I think I'll just leave it at that. Now I'm going to start to add my cordials. So the Crusher Lime Cordial. This contains sugars which I think are going to be unfermentable and that's possibly a good thing because the hops are going to be bitter and the citrina is going to be bitter so this is going to balance that I think by adding a bit of sweetness so the end product won't be too dry and, and tart it will hopefully have a bit of sweetness as well. It just smells like if I had to tell you, you know, like when you get um, lime flavoured uh, lollipops or something like that, it's that really artificial lime flavour, but I think it's going to go well in the lager. Right, here we go. Incidentally, this contains preservative. I could have tried to boil it out. I'm not bothered. It won't stop it from fermenting. What it might do is it might slow down fermenting from happening. It might just take a bit longer, but I'm, I'm fine with that. The Puritans will be like, oh no, you cannot put that in there, it must be boiled first. But honestly, I've done it both ways, it works. Just sometimes takes a bit longer. So the second line goes in. And now my Wovich. This has got a pourer, so it's going to take a little bit longer. In fact, it doesn't need to take a little bit longer. Out goes the pourer, and in it goes. It's looking a bit like a devil's brew at the minute. It's just occurred to me something quite funny actually. The crusher, <laughs> this is good. <laughs> because it's for milkshake, it's going to have tons of colouring in it, isn't it? I'm going to end up with a green lager, which is not a bad thing, I think it's quite fun. But I never even thought about that in the first instance, because if you put lime cordial in, it doesn't go green. But I'm going to end up with a green lager. Yay! I've never met a green lager before. Now I've got my big pan. Oh, malty goodness. It smells great, actually. Right, I'm going to go for the big dramatic pour. This is flipping heavy, but I think I can do it. Here we go. One, two, three. 
the drama. Oh yes. You like the Churchill dog? Oh yes. Green lager. Yeah. Right, I'm on 19 and a half litres. I'm not going to put five more litres of water in. I'm not going to open a big one. I'm going to get a two litre and top it up with that. So yeah, I'll pop this in and that'll be all the liquid then. I was going to put another five litres of water in and I'm glad I'm not doing it now. Right, that is now 21 and a half litres and that's exactly what I want. So I'm just going to give it a little stir with my big spoon to make sure that there's a consistent um, ratio of liquids in there for the gravity reading ratio. Probably being the wrong word, but I couldn't think of the right one. So I don't want there to be layers of different liquids within this. It does smell really good, malty and limey. It's kind of an interesting combination. It's making me wonder what lime flavoured milkshake might taste like. Incidentally, the citrus theme, the uh, lemon and the lime, is reflected in today's hat choice. Can you tell me which team this hat belongs to? It's non-league. I like me non-league football. It's proper football. None of this blooming millionaire nonsense. Right, in goes the hydrometer for the gravity reading. Little merry-go-round. Right, I'm just going to wait for the froth to settle a little bit. I'll come back to you shortly. And I'm starting on an original gravity of 1.050-1050. I quite fancied it being a bit more than that. I'm just going to scratch my head for a second and come back to you. So essentially, I want my lager to finish over 5%. Less than 5% to me, rubbish. I don't want that. I want over 5%. There's a danger that this could finish on something as low as 3.9%. It all depends on where it finishes. So in terms of gravity, I mean. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it for now. And if it finishes on 1.010, then I'll be happy. That's 5.25%. But if it's nearer 1.020, that's nearer 3.9%, then I'm not going to be so happy. But what I can do is add some extra sugars and then recalculate the gravities. So it's not the end of the world. I'm going to leave it for now and see where it finishes is essentially what I'm saying to you. So I'm going to get my dry ingredients in there. And this is very probably a waste of time, but I'm going to put some pectolase in because the lime um, cordial was quite a cloudy lime cordial. And I don't know if this will make any difference whatsoever. It very probably won't. But... If it does, then great, it's not going to hurt it. So three teaspoonfuls of that have gone in there. Now I'm going to add my yeast nutrient. And I'm going to add one, two, big block, plop, three, and four of that in there. I don't think I need to really add too much more because the kits themselves should have nutrient in there. Just helps the yeast a little bit. Now I want to get my yeast in. Sprinkle that on top. Give it a little stir around just so that the yeast doesn't sit on top for too long. Don't want to go whizzing it just a little bit to encourage it. Now fermentation might be slow starting because of the preservative in the cordial. Or it might not. You never know. Right, I need to have a little bit of a tidy round. I'm going to come back to you when I've done that. Right, the kitchen's tidy. Time to put this together now. So I'm just going to get the lid on the richest fermentation bin. These have got a lovely snap. There you go. All good. Really good seals on these buckets. Love them. I'm going to just turn it round so you can see the airlock. It's currently got no water in it. I'm going to remedy that right now. And I'm not expecting to see any bubbles in the next few hours at least. If, if it does happen today, it's going to be this evening, but I suspect it might be tomorrow or the day after. That yeast needs to build up in order to combat the preservative. I suspect. So I'll label the top and come back to you. 
Right, that's the bucket now labelled up and I'm just playing the waiting game. Before I finish this segment of the film, I just want to add a little post note that the uh, Wovich syrup wasn't just lemon flavoured, it was actually lemon and grapefruit flavoured. So it's going to be truly citrusy. So I'm going to have lemon, grapefruit and lime flavours in here. I think that's going to be quite nice. So I'm going to come back to you when fermentation begins, probably tomorrow or the day after, but you never know, fingers crossed, it might even be tonight. So I'll catch you then. Hey from the kitchen folks, it's brew day two and it had all been silent until about half an hour ago and then this just started to happen. I was sat in the living room getting on with some work and I just heard glug glug glug. So fermentation has begun, I'm happy, I'm going to move this somewhere that's a bit cooler because it's a lager, it wants to ferment at a cooler temperature so I'm going to put it in my hallway or in my front entrance porch, wherever I can fit it, I'm going to leave it, there's nothing to do until it's finished fermenting, I'm not taking the lid off, I'm not stirring it, so when it's finished fermenting I'll come back to you, I'll let you know what ABV it's on at that point by taking a gravity reading and then decide what I'm going to do in terms of do I add more sugar or do I just bottle it. Right, catch you later. Good very early morning folks. It's 2.20am. I went to bed four hours ago. I'm still awake so I've decided to get up and have a look at my lager and do something productive. So this is actually brew day 12 and this stopped fermenting by brew day 6. I've been a little bit tardy. I should have dealt with it before now but I'm now going to get on with it and I'm going to have a look what the gravity is. So if the gravity reading isn't low enough then I'm going to need to add some more sugar in there. Lid off. <laughs> Snap. So some first impressions. It doesn't look green like I expected. I'll show you in a second. It smells very beery. I'm not particularly getting any lime off it though or citrus. So that's what it looks like in the bucket. Let's see what the gravity is then. Ah, this isn't bad. This is an encouraging sign. It's on 1010 actually. Exactly 10, 10, 1 1.010. So I'm just going to work out what the ABV is. Right, so 1.050 minus 1.010 equals 0.04 multiplied by 131.25 equals 5.25 percent. Do you know what? I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it at that. I did say if it was over 5 percent I'd be happy with it and I'm happy enough with that. It's not a super strong lager but it's a decent strength. So now I'm going to rack it. Now truthfully I don't need to rack it but I like racking it. I prefer to bottle from Demijohns where I've got a bit more control than from the big bucket. So I'm going to get my Demijohns, I'm going to empty the sanitising solution out of them, rinse them out and then I'm going to come back to you when it comes to filling them up. So I'll see you in a bit. Right, I'm just about ready to go. Let me show you my setup. So first of all, two Demijohns there still with sanitising solution in and two Demijohns which have been rinsed and are now ready to go. I've got funnels in the top of each one and then I've got these filters. These filters are actually coffee machine filters, believe it or not. Banana for comparison. Dull men's good people will get that. Um, but yeah, these are great because there might be some uh, bits and bobs in here which I don't want to go into the demijohn, so these will prevent that from happening. I'm going to transfer using the plastic jug. Everything's been washed in very hot water. There's always a danger of contamination but that is part and parcel of brewing. Let's crack on with it. Fingers crossed. So it literally is a case of dip. And then into the Demijohn's pour. Right, anyway, you don't want to watch me pouring and pouring and pouring. So I'm going to come back to you when I've filled the first couple of Demijohns, show you what I've got and talk you through it from there. So I'll see you shortly. 
Right, these are now filled and I've put airlocks with bungs in the top. I just need to give them a rinse because they're going to be covered in sticky beer residue. Stand these on there to drain. That's number one at the back. That's number two. I like to record the order in which they come out because I can see the murkiness increase as it gets towards the bottom of the bucket. Right, I've done two. I've got two more to do. It's exactly the same process, so I'll come back to you when I've done these two as well. Okay, I've labelled these up in the order which they came out of the bucket. So number one, number two, number three and number four. And you can already see looking that they're getting darker at the top. And as the sediment settles, that'll become dark and clear and then there'll be a line of sediment in the bottom. I'm going to put these somewhere dark and cool, probably my office, under a desk, something like that. And I'm going to leave them until I'm satisfied that they've cleared enough. Then I'll come back to you for bottling. So I'll catch you then. Good evening from the kitchen, folks. This is brew day 48 for my citrus lager. And today is big bad bottling day. Let's have a look at it. So it's been in the Demijohns for five weeks and it's cleared up just nicely. You can see through that, you can see um, if I put my hand behind it quite easily. So it's nice and clear. Even the last one that came out, which was the cloudiest one, is also nice and clear now. So it's good for bottling. The colour is very dark for a lager and I can only put that down to the lime flavour that I put in there. I thought it was going to turn it green, but it hasn't. But it, it has made it a lot darker than I would expect. It actually looks like a bitter. In fact, it looks the colour of Stone's Bitter, if you remember that. Stoenzers. So I've got my bottles cleaned and sanitised, and I'm going to begin by adding a small amount of priming sugar into each bottle. Now, I have noticed that there is some gas being produced by this. Um, so I think it's actually carved itself, so I don't want to put too much sugar in, so I'm just going to put that much in each of these bottles. Uh, priming sugar basically will react with the yeast that's in there. The yeast will break it apart and that will create CO2 and that will build up pressure in the bottles, which will give it a carbonation. That's how it works. Anyway, I'm going to get the rest of this in and come back to you. So damage on number one, it is bung out. Siphoning tube goes in. I'm going to control the depth with this black clip at the top. I don't want to stir up the sediment too much if I can help it. And I can see a bubble reaction to this tube, so this has definitely got carbonation. Oh yeah, it's definitely, look at that, it's got a head. So I need to really be careful not to make bottle bombs here. I'm down as far as I want to go, I think. Maybe I can risk another couple of mil. That's enough. So the first bit that comes out is going to go into my hydrometer tube. Let's get busy with the fizzy. And then into the bottles. So the first bottle is just about full. And boy, I can smell the lime. So this is definitely going to be a limey lager. You can see big reactions there. I'm definitely going to be topping these back up. Okay, I'll come back to you when I've got these filled up. Shouldn't be too long. Right, that's the first batch done. So I've got my lids in boiling water just to give them a final sanitise. I'll burn my finger, but here we go. Ouch. And they're hot. So it goes into the capper, like so. It's magnetic, so the lid stays on there. So I've got the bottle just here. I've got the cap in the capper. That goes on top of the bottle like that. And then I just go down with these handles nice and gently, like so. And that is my first bottle capped. I've got to repeat this process now over and over. I'll come back to you when I've done that. So that's eight full ones from the first damage on and another half. I want to crack on so I don't let that oxidize, but I just want to rinse these bottles off first of all, because they've got sticky beer residue on the outside. And I'm going to let these bottles dry off in the living room. I've now got to go through this entire process three more times for the remaining Demijohns. 
You don't need to watch me do that. So when I've got it all bottled, I'll come back to you. See you then. And that is it done. That's 33 filled bottles. Right, let's have a look at the final gravity for this. So I've got my hydrometer here in the tube and it's looking reasonably low and I'm happy about that. You sometimes get quite a high final gravity with beers, but I can report that this one is on exactly 1.010. 10, 10. So I'm just have a little taste at this point, see what it's like. It's very sweet actually, much sweeter than I anticipated, but that will be the non-fermentable sweeteners and sugars which were in the flavours. The lime is the strongest of the citrus flavours to come through. But yeah, it's very nice. I think after it's conditioned for a while, that'll be a nice summer drink. Mmm, summer. Right, I've got a fair bit of tidying to do in the kitchen now. I'm going to get on with that, and then when I've done that, we'll get the labels made. I've got this Fomimo Bluetooth printer which connects to my phone. I use an app called Printmaster to design a label and I'm now going to print this off 33 times. Printastic. Right, just going to dry each bottle off individually and apply a label. So that goes on just like that. One down, 32 to go. I'll see you when I've done them. And there they are, like 33 bottles of summer happiness. Now I'm now going to take these upstairs out of the way and leave them for a month in a box. Then I'm going to come back to them. That's going to allow it to condition. The conditioning process is essentially building up the carbonation, letting the flavour develop, over time I find that these definitely do taste better. So it's now mid-June, I'll come back to this probably mid-July towards the end of July for the first opening and tasting. So I'll see you then. The British summer is here. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It is one month later. It is brew day 77. And tonight, I am a little bit prematurely going to open my citrus lager. Now, why tonight? Well, I fancy a lager because tonight is the final of Euro 2024, Spain versus England. And I want to drink lager when I'm watching England. Or something like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm opening it slightly prematurely, but I'm hoping, hoping that it will have carbed. So, here it is. I've had it in the fridge all day. It's just been chilling in my conservatory, uh, in a box, out of direct sunlight, out of the way. So it's had some heat and then it's had uh, some not heat, considering our really rubbish English summer outside, as you just saw earlier. Anyway, what's it going to be like? Am I going to get a fizz when I open it? Let's find out. So, am I going to get a... Ooh, a modest one. Hmm, that... Oh, no, I have got some vapour. Okay. There's definite vapour on it. Right. So, I feel like I've probably opened it prematurely, which I have. So, we'll see what it's like. Now, carbonation at present is not enormous. It is there, but it needs to be more, I think. Now, let's just see how that settles in the glass. Now, it doesn't look too bad really does it it's fairly clear it's got a very slight haze to it although that could be the coldness on the glass but no I think it is ever so slightly hazy it's got a distinct beery smell and yeah you get that lime now as well yeah that's definitely there okay so what does it taste like well the head is 
pretty rubbish. I, I think it needs longer. So and this is going to be my first opening and tasting. The second one's going to be probably in another month's time when summer's probably gone and it's autumn. Uh, and the autumn's probably going to be better than the summer because this is Britain. Little Britain. Right. What does it taste like? Well, it's not unreasonable on the palate. It's actually quite flavorful, flavorsome or flavorful, whatever I was going to say. Hmm. Or flavor flavor. Yeah, boy. Um, yeah, boy. It's quite sweet. Definite limey taste. Lagery taste, 5.3%. Yeah, I think, I think it kind of does taste around about the 5% margin. It's okay. It's definitely drinkable. It would have been better on a sunny, sunny day. But today is not a sunny, sunny day. This one will go down nicely with the football tonight. I hope that the football is going to be at peak performance. Uh, unlike this, this is not yet at peak performance, but we'll see. So I think I'm going to end up doing a second opening and tasting film for this um, in about a month's time, something like that. So I'll come back to it then and see how it has developed in that time. Okay, folks, it's been a pleasure as always. Cheers. evening from the kitchen folks it's just over a month later the brew day will appear at the bottom of the screen I can't calculate it in my head at the minute but the Euros are out of the way the World Cup's out of the way whatever the football was I've forgotten about it now I can't even remember what was it anyway we're doing pretty good at the Olympics so far so I thought I'd give my lager another try tonight so here it is citrus lager it's been in the fridge again and I'm going to see if it's improved in terms of condition from when I opened it the first time. So am I going to get a tss, tss. Okay, now it was a small one, but it was there. Okay, so I think I'm hoping that this is going to be a sparkler and develop ahead. But um, it's definitely been carbonated, but it's not massively carbonated. And it could be that's as far as it's going to go because it has conditioned for long enough now. And it's been in my conservatory. It's been in good warm temperatures. So there's no reason why it wouldn't have conditioned enough to sparkle. With that said, I have opened some bottles a year afterwards and they've been overly carbonated because it's continued to develop within the bottle. This hasn't happened with this one yet. Right, so first of all, Am I going to get a nice head? Let's have a look. Now it looks quite healthy on the face of it. I'll slow down because I don't want it to go bonkers. And note, I'm using the classic Stella Vars. Oh, I did like these. I like them more than the goblets. These take me back to when I were a student. And it were all about lager, 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 lager. You know the song. Uh, right, okay, so I think it's pretty safe to say that there is lots of activity there. So I'm happy with this. Now it is a nucleated bottom in the glass, um, but that is what it is designed for lager and it looks pretty damn good in that glass and the head looks good. So I'm going to say now that this is good, it's done. I'm very happy with that and the level of activity from within. Let's give it a taster. Now, this is good. There was a bit of a sickly taste to it first time round. It was a bit overpowering in one of the directions and I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. That's gone. It's balanced. So the lager flavour has now balanced quite nicely with the lime flavour. Neither one is trying to outcompete the other. They're both working quite nice and evenly and that's good. In terms of profile, It's still on the sweet side, but it's not overly sweet. And that's a good thing. Now, the first time I did this, it was a bit too sweet. By the end of the bottle, I'd had enough of it. I reckon I could drink a couple of these tonight quite happily. Yeah, so I'm happy with this. This has been a success. So finally, I can enjoy my citrus lager in the sunshine in my garden, which is all that makes me happy. Right, so let's get a picture for the front of the film. Thank you. So it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you for watching this 
through until the end. Please, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, give us a subscribe, like the films, press the bell, all that stuff, get the notifications. It helps the channel grow and I really, really do genuinely appreciate it. So thank you, folks. And I'll catch you on the next film, whatever that may be. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden, and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.